In Pingdong's Wandan Township, farmers are at a crossroads over the use of herbicides. Now, this area is famous for producing azuki beans. For decades, many farmers have used an herbicide called Paraquat to dry their beans to make them suitable for harvest. But in 2020, a ban was imposed on the use of Paraquat, leaving farmers scrambling to find another solution. Today, we head down south to explore the complicated relationship between farmers and their herbicides and to visit a township that's found a safe way to dry its crop. In Kaohsiung City in Pingdong County, in the period between fall harvest and the plowing of the land in spring, farmers traditionally grow short-term crops for extra income. In Wandan Township, the main short-term crop is azuki beans. Farmer Chen Guohua harvests his azuki beans when they ripen naturally. He also lets the plants age normally from the time they blossom to when they wilt. They go through the stages of life completely, undisrupted by man-made chemicals. When crops have truly aged naturally, the texture when you eat them will be different. When you cook them, they also smell different. However, as he watches the machine harvest the fruits of his labor, Chen can't get himself to feel an ounce of happiness. <laughs> Having seen bean farms all over Kaohsiung and Pingdong, these harvesters are well aware of what the problem is, moisture. The azuki beans aren't dry enough, leaving them prone to becoming moldy in storage. <laughs> Packed half full with beans, the machine suddenly stops. Upon inspection, the moisture in the plants appears to be the cause. The beanstalks and their pods contain moisture, and that's caused the soil to clump up and clog the delivery pipe. Naturally ripened beans are in the minority. They take more work to harvest. We don't really like harvesting this type because it takes up so much time. Due to the many difficulties involved, most azuki bean farmers have given up on growing beans naturally. Most farmers use a technique that lets beans dry quickly and be harvested quickly. In the final stage of the bean's growth, they spray herbicides that accelerate the wilting process. In the past, farmers tended to use an herbicide called Paraquat, which is inexpensive and highly effective. However, it's also toxic to humans and can be fatal if misapplied. After many years of deliberation, the Council of Agriculture implemented a complete ban on its use in February 2020. Over the years, there were many tragic stories of farmers or members of the public misusing paraquat, resulting in the loss of life. So we thought about it and concluded that it's too risky to use. Furthermore, in the international community, more and more countries are looking at these poisonous herbicides and putting an end to their use. Without paraquat, how can farmers speed up the drying process? The COA suggests two alternatives, pelargonic acid and sodium chloride. However, each of these two drying agents has its limitations. Therefore, the question of how to balance consumer safety and crop integrity remains a difficult problem for farmers. In fall 2020, the COA held 10 seminars to discuss a possible third alternative, an herbicide called glufosinate ammonium. One seminar was held at the country's largest azuki bean farming area, Wandan Township, which is known colloquially as the home of the azuki bean. The atmosphere at the seminar was tense as Wandan's farmers rallied against the new herbicide. <laughs> So now, paraquat is banned and we have to use glufosinate ammonium. The government wants us to use glufosinate ammonium. Personally speaking, I am opposed. This is because experts have doubts about this compound. Wandan azuki beans are a brand. Of all the brands, why would people choose ours? Because Wandan farmers make sure our herbicides are safe. Glufosinate ammonium is a legal herbicide and has repeatedly passed safety testing. However, the compound is absorbed by the plants it's sprayed on. It's unknown how much of the substance is transferred to the beans and how that may affect the human body. 
As both of these questions are in dispute, farmers in the home of the azuki bean objected to its use. We in the COA are very attentive to the voices of farmers. With regard to the farmers' practical needs, we received feedback from them. They wanted the government to give them more options. Our hope is that farmers use chemical herbicides only as a last resort. Glufosinate ammonium is being considered as an alternative for the banned substance Paraquat. But years ago in Kaohsiung's Mainong district, farmers had already come up with their own replacement for Paraquat. If we want to engage in environmentally friendly farming, we cannot use Paraquat when planting or harvesting adzuki beans. Seven years before the COA banned the use of Paraquat, Mainong district chose to stop using it. Without exception, all contracted farmers were prohibited from using Paraquat to dry azuki beans. Faced with the challenge of drying beans without Paraquat, Mainong Farmers and its Farmers Association worked together to create an alternative. They started experimenting with table salt and fertilizers that were promoted as safe by the Kaohsiung District Agricultural Research and Extension Station. <laughs> Ammonium sulfate and urea are both used as fertilizer. Applying too much fertilizer will damage a plant. So will applying too much salt. Several farmers in Maino found that by intentionally damaging the crop, they could get it to wilt faster. Consumers have greater demands now when it comes to food safety. I think that Mainong's adzuki bean industry was slower to develop. Daliao District and Pingdong's Wan Dan started much earlier. Therefore, when trying to make inroads in this industry, we have to put more emphasis on environmentally friendly farming. That way we can catch up with the competition. To get more farmers to use the new technique for drying crops, the association rolled out incentives. <laughs> the association offered to buy azuki beans at an above market price to encourage local farmers to get on board. Although that induced many farmers to try out the new technique, getting it right was easier said than done. With support from a team, the farmers approached the new technique with the spirit of experimentation, learning as they went along. After years of trial and error, they've perfected a formula and worked out the ideal SOP for applying it. Spray when it's almost yellow, that's how you get the best effects. There's about 200 liters of water in here. We adjust the amounts proportionally, 20 kilograms of urea and 5 kilograms of salt. It's more environmentally friendly and it won't harm your body, so it's fine if you don't wear a mask. You just spray until everything is covered in salt. Mainong has used this technique for seven years, and it's caught the attention of consumers. With farmland totaling 1,000 hectares, Mainong is Taiwan's second largest azuki bean production area, second only to Wandan, which boasts 1,500 hectares. Paraquat is banned, but Mainong farmers have no need to turn to glufosinate ammonium. Farmers here have worked together to produce all the plump azuki beans they can handle. I'm a farmer. I grow things for people to eat. If I grow something I myself would not want to eat, I would not give it to others to eat. We're already in our second spring, so we want to farm in a way that's more environmentally friendly. As someone who works the land for a living, my hope is for more people to get acquainted with Taiwan's azuki beans. Actually, Taiwanese azuki beans are fairly high quality. The beans we grow here are top-notch. With climate change a growing concern, growing food naturally is increasingly difficult, and many farmers turn to herbicides. But despite the challenges, some farmers are finding ways to stick to their guns, producing all-natural food that's good to the earth and to those who eat it. <laughs>